So you're here to talk about OpenCV, packaging it with Python and running it in a Docker container? Well, you're at the right place. If we're just meeting, hi, I'm Michael from PixieSoft and this is our daily show. This is our show that's tied to our Scrum sprints. Right now we're in our fourth sprint and we're migrating an existing application from bare metal to cloud. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you don't want to miss the next stand-up or the next report we publish on how we're doing. As usual, we're gonna start right with our scrum board. So I'm gonna go there right now. As you can see, these are the tasks that we're occupying ourselves with. And in the previous stand-up, we talked about the deployment of a URL test server. Now what that was, that was simply a service that is deployed and pings an edge device, should there be a new edge device deployed in our service. Now I thought that this would lie in, a, in the cluster where the feeder where, uh, lives, that's where the data is fed to the clients, but in fact, it's deployed in the Eater cluster. So what happens is that a client, a person with a web client would connect and would want to see a live feed of data. They connect to the feeder and they want to add a new edge device. So they tell the feeder, hey, I want to add a new device. And what happens is that the feeder, since the feeder has an open socket with the client, the feeder then asks the eater, hey, I want to add, or this client wants to add a new edge device. Will this work with you? And the eater has the URL test service deployed in the cluster, takes a look at it, pings it, and then it returns yes or no. And then the device is added to the whole system. Now this, as you can imagine, was a super easy task. It was pretty much a service that had no dependencies other than the usual suspects um, and got packaged and deployed. But then I moved on to a more, let's say juicy service and that was the resizing server. Now the resizing server depends on OpenCV and it was developed a couple of years ago, namely four years ago. And what happened there in the time of the deployment or the development was that the OpenCV as a library would get downloaded, you would compile it, and the outcome of this compilation would be a Python bridge. And then you would have it installed on your server and yada yada, everything is great. Except I didn't know this going into it. So I went to PyPy, where usually you would go if you see an import in a Python file and it says import CV2, you'd be thinking, um, sure, I'm meant to find this package, right? So I tried to find, I just Googled import CV2 Python and it found this package, open CV Python, right? I mean, sounds pretty obvious, except when I scroll down, to find the appropriate version that would correspond to the timing of the development, you can see right here that the very first package that was deployed or that was published is in September 2016. And that just doesn't go together. How come the first release was in September 2016 when the service where the OpenCV is running was developed in 2015? So one and one no longer made two and uh, I frankly didn't know what to do. And so I contacted the engineer that worked on it previously. I said, um, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like the right package. Which package did you use? And that's when I found out that in fact, he compiled the OpenCV all together and that yielded a Python bridge. But he told me, but really is just a wrapper. It shouldn't be too different. Now, this sounds like one of the sentences before death, you know, one of those things, 
oh yeah, this is a really nice dog. So that's one of those things. Ah, it should work. It's, um, it's just a bridge. Um, but I mean, there's nothing to lose, right? So why not try it? So I added it to the requirements file um, and I found one problem. Now equally as this Python service was dependent on OpenCV, it was also dependent on NumPy. And now we all know NumPy, it's a really crucial um, library on which the most, the majority of the modern ML frameworks are based on. And um, unfortunately, the version that the service needed was 1.93. Now, those of you that work regularly with NumPy might know that 1.93 is a very old version of NumPy. And the problem lied in the fact that this particular release of OpenCV needs NumPy version 1.113. And I was like, YOLO, I guess. And so in the requirements.txt file, I upped the version of NumPy so that there's no collision. I added this as a dependency and I ran pip install. And then I ran the service. And I have to say that it started up but as you know, with Python, it won't crash until you reach the point of the code that is incompatible. It's, it doesn't go through everything, doesn't compile it, it just sits there. It's an interpreted language, meaning if there's an error, you'll find out later. And so it's packaged, it starts up, but I don't know if everything works. And that's going to be exactly the task that I'm going to be occupying myself with today. That will be finishing the container now, as you know, or maybe you don't know, maybe you didn't see uh, our previous standups. I don't usually commit the Docker file immediately to the repository right after I'm um, semi done, because I don't want to commit a semi working product. I don't want to have in the repository something that just doesn't work. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't put it in the repository. Of course, I have a feature branch where I'm working on it and should my computer set on fire, I have a backup of it. But it's not done until it's merged into master. And located all hard-coded constants. In fact, yes, I did. So I'm going to mark this one. I did find all of the constants. Now, there's one tiny thing and that is that this or these services not only the resizing server but also the export server or the post-processing server these runs on a separate cluster because these are let's say computationally more intensive and maybe it would be useful if we deployed a cluster with gpus so that feeder and eater for their let's say um, daily tasks are not occupied or the computation power is not stolen from them by something that's computationally really intensive, such as resizing images, right? And so we need to deploy a new cluster for these services that are supporting um, the whole system. And then I'm going to deploy it on it. And we'll see. We'll see if there are some compatibility issues if there are some methods and functions that differ from the version of 2015 where OpenCV was compiled by your, by your own devices and PyPy, um, we'll see. And I'll let you know in our next standup. And as I say, all the standups should be short, brief and to the point. So I'm gonna end it right here. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, if you have any experience with OpenCV, do let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to hear from you your success stories or failure stories. Hey, this is a channel where we all learn. So um, drop, drop a comment below. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it with your friends if maybe they would gain some 
some knowledge from this and check out our blog, pixiesoft.blog, where we regularly post everything we learn, everything we do and everything we learn along the way. All right, that's it for me. Back to work, back to OpenCV. And I know there wasn't a stand-up yesterday, but there's gonna be a stand-up tomorrow. So I'll see you then.